Lady! I broke its heart! We're going fishing for the first time for me! It's a legit Gnome house eh. Oh, yes, we are. about the anatomy of fishes today so we're going to do a comparison when we catch more fishes stay tuned look at the small little cuttlefish i like what its name said cuttlefish they are not fishes they're just cephalopods same group as octopus squid they are so cute They are like they are in a format where it's streamlined and it's like like that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's just the other way. Also, eventually flattened. Yes, so this is another special type of fish. Probably it's a really, really, really bottom feeder. I'm trying to make her to open her mouth so I can see what's inside. Inside his mouth is my broad. Please give me back. Caught three fish, just two groupers and one I don't know. Yeah. That's, oh, it's a bad day. The wind is too strong, the car is too strong, the fish doesn't want to come out. Okay, we'll do that for a then, right? Yeah, we will. Let's do it. That should Hey! These are the fishes that we caught. Two of them are groupers. This is the dusky tail grouper, this is the orange spotted grouper, and this is the flat head fish. So, this is our largest catch, the dusky tail grouper. First of all, here, can you see this long part? This is known as the dorsal fin, and there's actually two parts. Here's the very sharp and spiny one, and here's the soft one. And this is the anal fin. Below here, you can see it's the pelvic fin. There's two of them. Okay, so all these three fins, they're either the top and bottom, and they are supposed to stabilize the fish and just make sure it doesn't roll over. And then now you have this pectoral fin, the one that Nemo, like you know, has the injured pectoral fin. And this is important because it helps the fish to steer and move and turn in the water. And last but not least, is the caudal fin, also known as the tail. And this is the main thing that makes the fish propel forward. Can you see this line here? This is known as the lateral line. Every fish will have this because this is their sensory organ. It's like small, the fluid filled. Uh, organ like one line here and that's how they detect vibrations in the water and current changes here you have the gill cover or also known as the operculum where it covers and protects the soft gills that's inside the fish so yeah this whole thing so the fish will uh, then the, the water will uh, come out from there yeah fish do not have eyelids and the eye is covered with this layer of gel like substance that protects the eye but the whole body is actually covered in slime and most fish actually do come in slime, that's why it's slippery when you first catch it. And this slime is actually important because it protects it from the bacteria that might infect the fish. Depending on the type of diet, different kind of fish have different kind of teeth. So this fish, they have smaller, small teeth in front, but if you look closely at the back, it has what you know pharyngeal teeth. They look like tiny stones at the back of their throat and it's used to grind and chew up food. You start from the vent, so this is a small little hole where all the shit came comes out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like a little treasure chest. So this part is actually where the internal organs are and the rest are all white meat, which is why I don't bother cutting it. So what the fishmongers do, they will just grab this whole thing and pull it out and then they fillet the fish. But now we get to see what's inside of it. So this thing, this is the swim bladder. Fish have the ability to add air or remove air from it and that's how they actually go higher and lower up the levels of the ocean. And this is the liver of the fish. It's a fatty substance where it's pretty the same function as the humans. Yeah, they store all the fatty tissue there and it's important for detoxification, yada yada. This finger-like projection, known as pylori cecum, and it's part of the digestive system. It produces enzymes and it digests some of the food, but no one exactly knows what are the exact functions yet. Can you see this tube here? It's the intestines! Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so their intestines are not that long. Aha, uh -huh, behind here. This is the tummy, the stomach. And we can open it up and see what the fish has eaten before it dies. Okay. Uh, actually, he didn't really eat much. These are prawn bits, la. look like prawn paste to me, which is true. I mean, we bait it with live prawn, so. In fish, their kidneys are a bit interesting. It's not like, you know, like red beans, like us, you know, the shape. It's actually one long tube. And it's right behind the galbell that we just removed. Can you see this red color thing that's hidden by the transparent membrane? Yeah, so that is the line of organ which is known as the kidney. I think I broke the heart. Heartbreaker! Heartbreaker! Can you see this pinkish thing? Mm -hmm. It's actually the heart. And I accidentally burst it so the blood is like flowing out now. So, if you guys learn your science correctly, fish, they have a single circulatory system unlike humans who have double circulation. When the fish breathes in oxygen, right, the heart pumps straight away to rest of the body and you go back. But for humans, we actually go to the heart and go rest of the body and go back to the heart and go back to our lungs. So that's double. Different. The water goes in and then the fish will absorb all the ex uh, dissolved oxygen and water will flow out through the gills. These are known as gill filaments on gill rakers. It's basically to provide a greater surface area so that the fish can absorb oxygen more efficiently. The brain is located on top here in the fish's head and it's actually like a smaller version of brain so it's nothing much interesting and it's quite difficult to get so yeah, let's not do it. And that's all for the anatomy of fish. We're gonna cook some fish now! My hand feels really smelly and yes! Bye bye! Till next time! Just keep thinking!